What we're going to do is we're going to play a game, a computer game that I created to help us learn about the American Revolution. Okay? While you have most of the history of, of the American Revolution focusing on areas like Boston primarily, uh, we get to see that Bergen County was a true battleground county. The name of the game is Choosing Sides and then the American Revolution in Bergen County is the subtitle. What we're going to do is we're going to follow the fictional character of John Van Dunk. The reason why his name is Van Dunk is because Bergen County was primarily Dutch during the American Revolution. Okay. The point of the game is for students to experience the divided loyalties of Bergen County, and they do so by looking at a number of different factors through different characters' eyes, and they have to now decide if they're going to be patriots or loyalists. The one character that I knew I was going to have from the start was Theodosia Prevost, because she was someone that had played both sides, and survival for her and her family was the most important thing. So I thought her story was the most unique. It was also a female, um, which I thought you know a lot of the class could connect to as well. Uh, and then I wanted to include religion, because the split in the Dutch Reformed Church mirrored the split um, in Bergen County when it came to Patriots and Loyalists. Uh, Reverend Garrett Latterker's story was very interesting to me. Uh, so being that it took place in the English neighborhood, and not far from here, uh, it seemed like a natural fit. And when I found out that they had a slave Thomas, I was able to incorporate the race aspect as well. So Gina, what happened in New York in November 1776? The British took over. Okay. So how would that impact things in this area? They would they were moving there because like they thought they'd have a better chance of surviving. Yes. And I think what it does for the students is it really immerses them in their in their historical knowledge. You kind of get to figure out whether what you would do if you were actually there rather than just read it out of a book. It's a choose-your-own-adventure type game. There will be a few lines of plot, then you could pick an answer, and depending on what you pick at the end of the game, it will tell you whether or not you're a patriot or whether you're a loyalist. Mainly, I chose loyalist because I didn't want to get my property taken by the Sons of Liberty. I chose to be a loyalist because I had business, and I live near New York, and to keep my business running, I needed to sell my goods at New York. I chose to be a patriot because it's better to um, be independent because you're in America and not England. So I chose to be a loyalist because I felt that it would be safer and I felt that religion also had a lot to do with it because I wanted to go with the conferenti side and be stay more loyal to traditions. I chose to become a patriot because I think it's right to fight for your independence and to be independent from the church and I didn't I don't really agree with the British ways. Were the British guaranteeing them freedom, or were the well, Patriots said, guaranteeing them freedom? They said um, if the slaves go to the British side, they'll give them freedom. Right, okay. The so creation we, process was, was a lot shorter than the research process. The research process of this was a year and a half to two years. And when I had the story worked out, uh, it took me basically three days to put together. It took a day to, to draw all the characters, and another day to do the background sets on uh, Google SketchUp. So I got very little sleep over those three days, but I think the payoff was a lot better and um, you know, it was worth in the end because the kids really understand how complicated history can be at some times and they see history as a story. It's, it's not a matter of right versus wrong all the time. And when I teach history, and it's the great thing about social studies, there's not always a right answer. It's a, history is about perspectives, how you see things. I really like how Mr. Lockwood teaches it, especially with this game, just because I think the only really thing a teacher is required to do is kind of set out a path of so like that we can pass pretty much the class. But I think he went way beyond that because he just appealed to other people's ways of learning and really tried to help them not just learn history but enjoy it too. This experience has changed my view of overall history class because now instead of just learning about the past I'm kind of imagining myself in the people's shoes that I'm learning about because now I actually understand that it actually happened I'm not just learning random information that I have to memorize for tests. The key difference is that technology allows teachers today to truly engage students in a very different way so it brings history to life for them. Okay. We want to be able to practice the religion we feel the way it should be practiced. Uh, by the age of 21, it's predicted that kids will play over 10,000 hours of video games and only read um, maybe less than 5,000 hours. So with that trend toward gaming, uh, you have to use the tools that the kids are used to. Um, and I thought gaming would be a great way to connect to them and get them really immersed in the history. Education really has to, to change. The way we teach has to adapt to these new style of learners. Uh, the 21st century learner is someone who can multitask, uh, someone who is a gamer. 
it's more important, I think, to focus on the thinking process rather than just hit them with the, the facts. Here, uh, and that really speaks to their, their future careers, which are, are going to be focused on communication, working in teams, and looking at how things get done rather than just rote memorization.